match n'est pas comme les autres. Au début, on tuait des matchs sérieux parce que ça a été deux bonnes équipes. Les émotions sont différentes. Oui, Aoundé ne rêve que de ce match. Ici, la rivalité atteint les sommets les plus inimaginables. La couleur du toit, on ne blague pas. Ce samedi à 16h, les frères ennemis de la capitale jouent une autre partition de ce derby historique. Canon Tonnerre sur CRTV Sport and Entertainment. Venez, vivez, vibrez. Le coronavirus deuxième vague est une réalité dans notre ville. Les chiffres sont inquiétants au niveau du district de santé de la MIFI. Lavons-nous les mains à l'eau courante à défaut de les désinfecter avec du gel hydroalcoolique. Évitons les attroupements inutiles. Restons à la maison et ne sortons que si c'est nécessaire. N'envoyons pas nos enfants faire du commerce ambulant dans les rues. Coming up tonight, President Denis Sassou pledges to develop and diversify Congo's economy as he is inaugurated for the first time in the presence of heads of state and Cameroon's Prime Minister John Goute. 60 megawatts of electricity from the Nactigal power plant will be injected into na national power grid by 2023. Two ministers today visited the site. And CRTV now has the broadcast rights of Elite 1 and 2 soccer and women's football matches following an agreement signed today in the nation's capital. The details right now. Edwin Kinzaka in Yaoundé. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. President Denis Sassou Nguesso has pledged to develop and diversify the Congolese economy and place his country on the path of economic takeoff. The Congolese leader was speaking today in Brazzaville after taking an oath of office for the first consecutive mandate. The event, attended by some African heads of state, also witnessed the participation of Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, representative of President Paul Biya. Christian Chiatam reports from Brazzaville. The inauguration ceremony of President Denis Sassou Nguesso looked like a roll call of heads of state of the Semak and Ekas blocs. Sixteen presidents and four heads of government were amongst leaders and personalities who showed up for the event. Amongst them, Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, representing President Paul Pia. It was in front of the august guests and a cross-section of his compatriots that Denis Sassou Nguesso took the oath of office during the special audience of the Congolese Constitutional Court, which took place at the Brazzaville Conference Center. For this fourth consecutive mandate he is beginning as president, Denis Sassou Nguesso says his priority will be to diversify the Congolese economy by developing the agricultural sector. He argues that this will improve the country's balance of trade and help place her on the path to economic takeoff. The newly installed equally targets youth development, peaceful coexistence, and the uplifting of the social sector. 
while thanking all Congolese who made his 88% victory possible during the March presidential election, he invited them to join him in working for better times for the Republic of Congo. He equally thanked the heads of state and heads of government who showed up for the inauguration, saying by their presence, they have honored the Congolese people and proven to be true friends of the Republic of Congo. The inauguration was followed by a military parade at the esplanade of the Libreville Conference Center. Different regiments of the Congolese army paraded in front of the new president and his guests. A 21-gun salute ended the inauguration of President Denis Sassou and announced the start of his fourth successive mandate of five years. Christian Cheatam, CRTV. Ministers of the Economy and Finance in the CEMAC zone have expressed satisfaction over advances made on financial reforms as well as in the exploitation of natural resources of the Central African region. During a video conference of the Economy and Finance Ministers counting for the 13th Ordinary Session of the Central African Economic and Monetary Community, an intensive examination was carried out on economic and development projects earmarked for CEMAC. Luma Slim Davis report. The conference of the Economic and Finance Ministers of the CIMAC Zone has placed critical issues in their proper perspectives, such as improving on the quality of public expenditure in the member states and enlarging the tax base, amongst others. We have adopted a new program for the year 2021 to 2025. Uh, we have integrated the strategy of negotiation uh, for the second generation uh, of agreement with IMF. Also a plan for our economy. The ministers also focused on the reconstruction of the level of exchange reserves and the follow-up of negotiations with principal enterprises exploiting natural resources in the SEMAC zone. We have adopted concrete and practical measures to reinforce integration commercial integration to accelerate structural reform. Without structural reform, whatever we will say, we will never make progress. The COVID-19 pandemic that has claimed 1,453 lives in the zone also preoccupied the CIMAC economic and finance ministers. The National Mining Corporation has new officials at its head. The officials appointed today after Sona Mines working session presided at by the Minister of Mines, Industry and Technological Development, Gabriel Dododoke, include Sylvester Motangongo as chair of the General Assembly, Musa Blaze as board chair, and Bayogeno Serhev as director general. Fru Jonathan is Sona Mines' deputy director general. Let's listen to his reaction just after that meeting that was held today. We shall be coming back to that reaction, but let's now move on to electricity. The first 60 megawatts of electricity from the Nachigal hydropower plant will be injected into the national electricity grid in February 2023. This revelation was made by construction engineers during a visit by the Minister of Energy and Water Resources, Gaston Elundu Esomba, and the Minister of Labor and Social Security, Gregoire Wona. Details with Beatrice Ngum. Two ministers, one mission, to assess the level of works on these over 800 billion civil francs projects expected to supply 420 megawatts of electricity to the national grid as soon as the plant goes operational. Upstream, like downstream, the different components of the project are gradually but surely taking shape. The main roller compacted concrete dam is expected to be completed by February 2021. The reservoir area and the hydraulic closure dikes, like the head raised channel power plant with its seven turbines, will also be set to use latest 2024. The first turbine is going to be commissioned by February 2023, and the seven and last one is going to be commissioned by March 2024. Nakchiga has really become, I think, the first point of our economy for now. The first pylons have been installed upon completion the power plant with its generation substation and a transmission line of 50 kilometers in length will transport electricity right up to the Niamtu substation in Yaoundi. 
For now, the level of advancement of work on the site is estimated at 38 percent, contractors told the visiting ministers. The Minister of Transport, Jean Ernest Messina Galebi Behe, says studies on the railway lines on the Douala Yaoundé and Bela Bongaoundé axis are in the second stage of investment negotiation. Minister Galebi Behe was speaking today in Yaoundé at the 36th session of the Interministerial Railway Infrastructure Committee. Luma Slim Davis was there. The 36th session of the Interministerial Committee of Railway Infrastructures marked a turning point in the modernization project of railway equipment and activities in Cameroon. It's very important to have new rails because you can have a better track. And it's very important for the people, for the passengers, but it's also very important for the freight traffic because when you have a loop, it's a loop. When you have a wagon which goes from the beginning to the, to the end of the railways, the importance of these uh, wagons is to come back a quicker time uh, at the beginning, to be more operational. Members of the committee examined the state of execution of the resolutions arrived at during the 35th session of the committee. This express, you have more uh, stations that will be, uh, will be in touch, like uh, Macaque, for example, and uh, about three to five stations. What is important is the passenger transport should be increased and the freight transport should be increased. And we have some project with the mine, by example, that is very important for uh, railways. Emphasis was laid at the session on the project to extend railway lines from Gaoundere to Chad. Five million seedlings have been provided to boost production during the 2020-2021 planting season in Cameroon. The Director General of the Cocoa Development Cooperation to the Cow was speaking in Ambam in the South region as he officially launched the new planting season. Jean-Claude Eko Aquafan encouraged farmers to step up quality and quantity this year. Details with Pontanus Lawong. These 32 hectare cocoa seed gardens have never been watered in the dry season since creation in 1960. The Cocoa Development Corporation Sedekao is setting up an irrigation scheme for that purpose, as 40% of new plants are lost each year. The Director General of Sedekao, Jean Claude Eko Aquafan, has come to Koyevon to supervise the work, estimated to be 60% complete. We are producing 200,000 cocoa pots, hybrid cocoa pots, and we think that. With this uh, irrigation system that is put in place, we'll get about 400,000 cocoa pots within before 2025. New farms are being created while old ones are being renewed and fertilized with the objective of boosting output. It should be noted that the Cameroon government is working tooth and nail to increase cocoa production from 300,000 to 640,000 tons yearly by 2025. But the country's cocoa seed production capacity is below expectation. Some 5 million seedlings are needed to satisfy the demand from farmers each planting season, but only 10% is supplied for the moment. The National Mining Corporation has new officials. The officials appointed today after Sona Mines working session presided at by the Minister of Mines, Industry and Technological Development, Gabriel Dododoke, include Sylvester Motangongo as chair of the General Assembly, Musa Blaze as board chair and Bayogo Saish Heve as director general. Fru Jonathan is Sona Mines deputy director general. Let's listen to his reaction after today's meeting. All what we did this evening here, uh, we had the occasion at uh, this session to put on place the management of uh, uh, the management organs of the uh, mining national. Uh, a company and a general meeting was put on place. His president is known at this moment. The general management also has been put on place. The general manager is known. Concerning the, 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 the confidence bestowed upon us by the head of state by designating us to, to be members of this first general assembly of Sonamin, of the National Mining uh, Corporation. And uh, after that, uh, I would not want to say that our impressions are quite uh, positive and uh, we are optimistic because instructions have been given by the Minister of Mines to the operational units to start work immediately. So we have to set up 
the, the strategic plan and also the subject risk plans. And also we have to sensitize all the actors, all the stakeholders uh, that there is a new stakeholder in the mining sector concerning the solid mine. I will start by thanking the head of state, President Paul Beer, for this mark of confidence that has been bestowed on me. I'm so happy I measure the dimension of our responsibilities and uh, today I'm quite happy. My impressions are those of joy, those of satisfaction and uh, I believe that with this mark of confidence we're going to show the President of the Republic and all Cameroonians that we can meet up with the task that the head of state has assigned us. Cameroon's Minister of Scientific Research and Innovation and the Turkish Ambassador to the country have explored possible avenues of scientific collaboration between the two nations. Minister Madeleine Twente and His Excellency Volkan Iskse outlined education and infrastructure as areas that could be promoted immediately. Here is the reaction of the Turkish diplomats at the end of that audience today. Uh, and we reviewed the, the, the state of the, the, the cooperation existing in, in the field of uh, scientific research and uh, we decided together the field of interest and the priorities of Cameroon to bring their uh, added value and uh, to, to share their experience uh, with Cameroon's uh, priorities to put uh, into action studies, infra infrastructure for the uh, well-being of the uh, Cameroon's uh, youth people uh, in the field of uh, scientific research. 17 fake certificates have been identified from a package of 2,650 qualifications examined by the National Commission for the Evaluation of Training Domains Suffered Abroad. The session in Yaoundé was chaired by the Secretary General at the Ministry of Higher Education, Professor Wilfred Nyogbet Gapsa. Gerard Nanje Iyambe was there. In order to improve the quality and quantity of training offered abroad, there is the need for its diplomas to be rigorously assessed, authenticated, and validated by the bodies in charge of equivalences. The first that we have today for examination, what we are going to do is to now to accept the authentication and all the work that we have done. This certificate that this person had is very authentic because we don't only look at the certificate. You look at the conditions of admission, you look at uh, the, the program, the curriculum. While opening the 100 ordinary session, the Secretary General at the Ministry of Higher Education, Professor Wilfred Gapsa said the move is geared towards ensuring a competent and productive human resources badly needed for the emergence of the country by 2035. With good certificates and the profiles that people have, it's going to help improve on the quality of services. There are specific programs for specific jobs. This is being achieved thanks to the electronic management system for equivalence put in place since 2018 and is already producing satisfactory results in the processing of the set files. Despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society. On to a COVID-19 slot tonight, with the availability of the first doses of the Sinopharm vaccines, many Cameroonians have expressed their readiness to be vaccinated, but some are still fit dragging. How do health professionals intend to convince people who are reluctant? Let's join Baldwin Sama and his guest, Dr. Eric Tande. Good evening and welcome. True, it has been said it is not mandatory, it is optional. There are some communities who have uh, uh, made known their intentions not to have themselves administered uh, the Sinopharm vaccine. It's difficult for health professionals to have to deal with uh, uh, social prejudice uh, with uh, the society, especially those who are resisting uh, the vaccine. How ready are they to deal, to deal with uh, these persons? Let's find out from Dr. Evitanzi, who is our guest tonight. Good 
evening to you, Doctor. Yeah, good evening, good evening Badu. How ready are you, the health practitioners, to deal with uh, those who will be resisting uh, these vaccines in Cameroon? Yeah, thank you, Baudouin. I will first of all take it in another angle to tell you that uh, the 2,000 doses of Sinopharm that has arrived will be very, very limited in the days ahead. However, there has been a smooth communication plan that involves the population as far as this is concerned. So the communication plan takes care of any misunderstanding, I must say, among the population. We know that with vaccination, a lot of information has circulated both on professional Professional medias and even social medias, and uh, they might be right to come up with this, but we have communicated and come up with a clear plan for each and every one to understand this. It has been said, it is said, and we will continue saying it. It is not mandatory, it is optional. Back to you. Thanks, Bordin. The Minister of Public Health, Manauda Malashi, has launched the vaccination campaign against COVID-19 in the southwest region. He visited Boya and Limbe as part of ongoing efforts to mobilize people to be vaccinated. Ndole Diale reports from Boya. Upon his arrival in Boya, he made a brief stopover at the governor's office where he was welcomed by the Southwest Chief Executive, members of the Southwest Regional Council and other moving forces of the region. The itinerary then moved to the Boya Regional Hospital where Minister Manauda Malashi was received and ushered to the COVID-19 vaccination center. There, Minister Manauda Malashi supervised the administration of the vaccine to some frontline health personnel. A similar exercise was also conducted at the Limbe Regional Hospital. Amongst those who received the vaccine were Governor Bernard Okalea Bilai, the President of the Southwest Regional Council, Elango Bakuma Zakios, and the Southwest Public Health Boss, Dr. Ibongo Zakios Nanje, who assures and encourages the population concerning the vaccine. We're encouraging all uh, our brothers and sisters in the region who are eligible for the vaccines to come up and take the vaccine just as uh, the governor uh, the governor of southwest region did it today at a period when the cases of COVID-19 in the region is at a geometric increase 12,000 doses have been made available to those who are willing the fight against the coronavirus pandemic has been intensified in the far north region with the arrival of 23,000 doses of Sinopharm vaccine. The first to be inoculated was far north regional governor Miji Yawabakari. Henry Tato Ekambi reports. The number one citizen of the far north, Governor Mijiawa Bakari, takes this first dose of the over 23,000 Sinopharm vaccines destined for the region. Mr. Mijiawa, by this gesture, is encouraging the populace to follow in his footsteps. Prevention is better than cure. That's why um, I came and got my vaccine. Beyond this vaccine, you have to observe the barrier measure. And we just call open the entire population of the far north region to come and get their vaccine. With the more than 11,000 health personnel in the region prioritized for this first consignment, some of them then followed suit to get their vaccines. Since I'm always with COVID-19 patients, I think taking this vaccine will help me prevent this deadly disease. Anytime there's an epidemic, we always combat it with vaccination. Each health personnel will receive two doses of the vaccine. More than 11,000 doses of the anti-COVID vaccine now in the Northwest region. Regional authorities say they are ready to start taking the vaccines themselves first before front health workers. We have details with Sylvie Bantan in Bamenda. The first phase of the vaccination program targets 5,700 persons. All the 20 health districts are concerned and the operation will unfold in 23 vaccination centers across the region. Health officials in the region perceive the vaccine as crucial in tackling the pandemic in a region where 173 COVID-provoked deaths have been recorded since the virus infiltrated in the region last year. We are very happy um, to have 
have had this vaccine um, with us in the Northwest region. We've received 11,400 doses, and so we're looking forward to vaccinating um, at least 5,700 persons. In priority to health personnel, you all know how health personnel have suffered from the COVID-19, and I think it explains in part why uh, they've been chosen as priority to be uh, administer the vaccine during the first first phase. The Secretary General at the Northwest Governor's Office has been vaccinated in a symbolic act to encourage the population to accept the vaccine. Each individual is expected to receive 0.5 mils of the first dose of the vaccine in the initial vaccination program. The NGO Strategic Humanitarian Services, SHUMAS, in collaboration with the UK-based group Building Schools for Africa, has donated schools, a laboratory, and other social amenities to some schools in the northwest region. The highly applauded gesture is part of a humanitarian response initiative to children suffering as a result of the socio-political crisis in the northwest region. Gerard Nanje Yambe reports. The educational sector remains one of the most hit by the crisis rocking the restive northwest and southwest regions. It is against this backdrop that Schumer's Cameroon and partner, Building Schools for Africa UK, have constructed and equipped classrooms and a laboratory in some schools in the Bamenda Ash Diocese. We realized there were two empty classrooms while the other classrooms were, were, were completely full. So that's why we give the benches. The cathedral is secure. Children can go to school. So uh, they exploited that opportunity to start a secondary school. The, the, the major problem that we had was water. And of course today, we have given them a boho. Be it at the St. Joseph Secondary School, Mancon, the St. Charles Luanga Primary School Upstation, and the St. John Primary and Nursery School, the non-governmental organization made its impact felt. We are also thankful for Schumas to help us to open our school laboratory. Good scientists will become out of it. There was no lab, and the students who were doing sciences, some of them were practicing dissection in kitchens in people's private houses. So I went to Schumer's, I was going everywhere and begging. And this opportunity has come, they are very happy. This humanitarian response has been considered as timely as it rekindles hope for the kids in the affected region. Professor Chade Eoni, one of Cameroon's most admired lecturers and journalist is dead. He died today in Yaoundé after a brief illness. Clarice Aretakang reports on the life of a man who was known for his passion in communication. A moment gone, and so too the man of this moment. A brilliant journalist and seasoned academic are the words his peers describe him by. Professor Michel Chade Eyone, member of Cameroon's Academy of Science, born June 13, 1950, spent seven years in elementary school and seven in secondary school. His academic baggage spans decades, first as student, then as lecturer after obtaining various diplomas from different institutions. They include the École Supérieure Internationale de Journalisme of Yaoundé, the Université Panthéon Assas of Paris II, and the Institut Français de Presse et de Sciences de l'Information. At the University of Yaoundé One, his passion for journalism took him to the Advanced School of Mass Communication as research assistant, senior lecturer, and associate professor. After sharing his experience as editor-in-chief at Radio Cameroon and sub-director in charge of programs at the Cameroon Radio Television, a great part of his professional life was devoted to administrative duties in institutions of higher learning and other departments until his retirement in 2015. Even though those who sat under his tutelage remember an authoritative, no-nonsense, intimidating, yet soft-spoken and highly respectable figure, his touch, they confess, was distinctive. Professor Michel Chade Yone chronicled his knowledge in a number of works, which all contributed to make him one of Cameroon's mass communication gurus par excellence. Students of the Catholic University of Central Africa, Yaoundé Kunu, have been drilled on successful entrepreneurship and leadership as ways of combating joblessness after their studies. This was during an educative talk co-organized by the French scholarship enterprise Studily and UCAC. Details with Victor Siga. 
Jointly organized by the Catholic University and the French Scholarship Promoting Enterprise, Tudli, the initiative seeks to inculcate into learners the spirit of entrepreneurship and facilitate access to foreign higher institutions for learners. The, the young people and the young Cameroonians can dream today to be entrepreneurs. They can change the world. That's the message that I, we want to, 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 to translate. They can just, just try to be ambitious. Panelists shared their success stories with participants while providing them with mechanism on entrepreneurship and how to think out of the box. Exchanges ended with the signing of a partnership agreement between the Catholic University and Studley Enterprise. Objective, facilitate access into French higher institutions for quality education and the professional integration of learners. The Minister of Sports and Physical Education has the honor to inform the public that the Executive Council of the Islamic Solidarity Sports Federation has unanimously awarded to Cameroon in the presence of Colonel Karkaba Marbum, President of the National Olympic and Sports Committee, the organization in 2025 of the sixth edition of the Islamic Solidarity Games. The attribution of this prestigious competition to Cameroon is a brilliant victory for its sports policy, conducted with wisdom and skill, under the strong impulse of the President of the Republic, His Excellency President Paul Bia, it confirms the strong position adopted by our country to stand as the best land as concerns the organization of major international sporting events with its modern and futuristic sports facilities, which makes our country proud with the best sports infrastructure in Africa. The organization of this competition on Cameroonian soil is an ideal opportunity to consolidate and harmon and or consolidate the harmonious living together, cultural and linguistic diversity, as well as the majority of Cameroon people in the general and athletes in particular during this great event that would be hosted by an African country for the very first time. And still, the Minister of Sports and Physical Education, President of Kokan 2020-2021, has the honor to inform the public that by the deadline for the reception of applications for the National Artistic Contest for the proposal of the official mascot of the Total uh, Africa Cup of Nations, AFCON, Cameroon 2021, on 14th April 2021, 33 files of mascot applications have been submitted and received at the tournament management. As regards the National Artistic Contest for the proposal of the official anthem of Total African Cup of Nations, AFCON, Cameroon 2021, the deadline for reception of candidature is 3 p.m. prompt on 21st April 2021 in the various points indicated for this purpose. It is signed Professor Narcisse Molekombi. CRTV now has broadcast rights of top matches of the Elite 1 and 2 Football Championships and the Women's Football Championship. A partnership agreement was signed between the audiovisual broadcaster and the Cameroon Football Association, FECAFOOT, today in Yaoundé. CRTV's Director General Sharon Dogo, Board Chair Rene Manuel Sadi, and FECAFOOT President Sedum Bombo Njoya were present. Details with Baldwin Sama. The append their respective signatures on these documents officially kickstarting a win win partnership and a new adventure to write a new page in Cameroon's football history. Henceforth, CRTV has broadcast rights of Cameroon's Edit 1 and 2 football championships, the Football Cup of Cameroon, and the Women's Football Championship as Faker Foot expressed joy partnering with uh, the Cameroon Radio Television. An opportunity for the CRTV to have a visibility on our, our, our events. So it's the, do we have, they have the rights now for, for, for certain periods and it means that they have a, the opportunity to, to produce and then to use the, 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 all our events in their programs. CRTV's Director General Charles Ndungu said CRTV will make use of our quality equipment to satisfy the football public. With this ceremony, we want to show our ability to adapt to the current health context. From now on, thanks to our joint efforts, football lovers will be able to experience the highlights of the king of sport throughout the country on TV, radio, but also on CRTV digital platforms. 
the partnership would permit CRTV prepare for the upcoming 2021 Africa Cup of Nations as CRTV would be at the heart of the Cameroonian sports movement. I have to support all actions carried out by CRTV to prove to the world CRTV's prowess and help CRTV live up to expectations. CRTV's Director General Charles Ndongo was awarded a jersey number nine, ready to captain Team CRTV to a successful partnership campaign with the Cameroon Football Federation. And that ends the 730 News on CRTV. Join Atta Badinouma in exactly 27 minutes from now for the news in the French language. I am Moki Edwin Kinzika in Yaoundé. Thank you for watching. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. TV News, ici, toute l'info.